exposing the northern shoulder of the Faust, shattering every German tank assault. The first division was created in 1917, but one or more of its units has fought in every one of the nation's major wars since the revolution. This is D Battery, 5th Field Artillery, the only gunners able to cross the Delaware River with George Washington on Christmas night, 1776, to surprise the British at the Battle of Trenton. This oldest unit of the United States Army was formed March 1st, 1776, as the New York Provincial Artillery Company. Its captain was Alexander Hamilton. Battery D fired the first artillery shots of the rebellion after the Declaration of Independence from the southernmost tip of Manhattan Island on July 12, 1776. From this same point, the cannoneers of D Battery fired the last shots of that war seven years later. A salute to old glory as British warships left New York Harbor. This is D Battery of the 5th Field Artillery again. The same battery, the same British enemy, but a different war, 1812. Its guns were unlimbered for only one engagement, New Orleans, the only major land battle won by the Americans. At the outbreak of this war with Britain, D Battery was one of two artillery companies stationed at Fort St. Philip. The fort commanded the Mississippi River approaches from the sea to New Orleans. General Pakenham expected the British fleet to sail up the river and help his force of British veterans from Waterloo cross General Jackson. If the fleet had gotten there, Jackson might well have been defeated. For eight days, British warships pounded Fort St. Philip but every time they tried to move past, they were halted by the guns of the two artillery companies. Jackson was victorious. Once again, D Battery had been decisive. In the days of America's expansion westward, the United States declared war on Mexico on May 11, 1846. Once again, D Battery of the 5th Field was in action, with a new unit, the ancestor of Company A of the 1st Division's 1st Engineer Battalion. D Battery, fighting them as infantry, and the engineers landed with General Winfield Scott at Veracruz. Veracruz fell on March 29, 1847, and Scott pressed on. D Battery distinguished itself at Cerro Gordo and Contreras. In the final attack on the Mexican capital, D Battery gunners were in the assault party that scaled the forbidding walls of the fortress of Chapultepec. And the engineers were there all the way to the capture of Mexico City on September 14th. The tragic cannon of secession broke the Union asunder in April 1861. Once again, units which were to form the 1st Division fought in the nation's bloodiest conflict, the Civil War. This time, D Battery of the 5th Field was joined by the ancestor of A Battery. Two newly formed regiments, the 16th and 18th Infantry, fought on widely separated battlefields. And three companies, A, B, and C, of the 1st Engineer Battalion tested their muscles and courage. Only once were the two artillery batteries together, but the place was history, a village named Gettysburg. They were part of the Union artillery, whose point-blank fire shattered Pickett's famous charge, the beginning of the end for the Confederacy. The 16th fought at Gettysburg too, one of its 11 campaigns. And at the end of the Civil War, historians determined that the 18th Infantry suffered more killed than any other regiment in the Army. Wagon trains pushed westward after the Civil War, and the 18th Infantry, garrisoning the old Bozeman Trail in Wyoming, reminded the nation that the Plains Indians were far from pacified. On December 21st, 1866, Captain W.J. Fetterman led a detachment of 80 soldiers from Fort O'Kearney let them right into an ambush of 2,000 Sioux warriors at Piney Creek. There were no survivors of what was called the Kearney Massacre. Ten years later, on the Little Bighorn River, there were no survivors when Chief Crazy Horse and his Sioux wiped out General Custer's command. Veterans of the 5th Field Artillery famous D Battery rode with the Powder River Expedition, which avenged Custer. And before the Indian fighting finally died away, the name of another regiment, the 16th, had been added to those who fought the Utes and the Cheyennes in the winning of the West. Flexing our international muscles, the United States declared war on Spain in April 1898. 
The battleship Maine was sunk in Havana Harbor, and Remember the Maine became a war cry. This Spanish-American war and the resulting insurrection of nationalists in the Philippine Islands drew the attention of D Battery of the 5th Field Artillery and the 16th and 18th Regiments and the Engineers. The 18th led the successful attack on the Spanish fortifications at Manila, and half a world away, the 16th followed rough-riding Teddy Roosevelt up San Juan Hill, and the guns of Battery D were leveled on Santiago de Cuba. In revolt against Spain, the Philippine nationalists soon turned their animosity against American forces. By November 1889, the poorly armed and disciplined Philippine armies disintegrated, but their guerrilla counterparts proved more difficult, holding out until 1902. Before the Paris tomb of a young Marquis who helped the infant American Republic in its revolutionary birth, General John J. Pershing told France, Lafayette, we are here. With him on that July 4th, 1917, were soldiers of the Big Red One. The 1st Division launched the first American offensive action at Cantini, and thousands fell here on this fateful field of Soissons, a turning point of the war. Hitherto unconquered Montsec added battle laurels as the Big Red One lunged against the San Mateo salient, then slogged into the shot-torn carnage of the Argonne Forest in the Meuse River. Historians call the Argonne America's greatest battle at that time. Of the division's epic struggle here, General Pershing's headquarters declared, the commander-in-chief has noted in this division a pride of service and a high state of morale, never broken by hardship nor battle. Once again, the first to fight, the Big Red One led the ground attack against the Axis in World War II, storming North Africa's Mediterranean shore near Oran, Algeria. Tunisia fell, and Sicily. Then it was Northern Europe with General Dwight D. Eisenhower and Hitler's Atlantic Wall on the Channel Coast of Normandy, and the 1st Division leading the assault again. Inland, the battle swirled, past Paris, through Belgium, into Aachen, the shell-splintered horror of Hürtgen Forest. And then, Hitler's massive counteroffensive with three armies through the Belgian Ardennes, this Battle of the Bulge. There would be more bitter combat in Germany before final victory in Czechoslovakia. But history would never forget the Ardennes and the battered, bleeding 1st Division, embedded in granite courage, holding the northern shoulder of the foe, shattering every German tank assault.